Hi, good morning. Welcome to Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. Welcome. We're thrilled that you're here to worship with us today. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks, and I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. Welcome. And I'm David Evans, Sign Language Interpreter. Today is January 10th. Pastor Michelle, I noticed that you have a, a big starlight hanging behind you. What is that? Yeah, today is the start of the epiphany season. Deacon Dorothy, would you mind explaining what epiphany is? Sure. Epiphany is an aha. Also, an epiphany is understanding something more or realizing something more deeply. In our faith, epiphany is understanding more about who God is and what God does. Oh, so the first epiphany was when the wise people followed the star to find the baby Jesus. That's amazing. Because it shows us that God's message and God's presence is for everyone, not just for people who are Jewish. So that big star is to remind us about Epiphany. Yeah, here at Bread of Life, we will follow this big star through the Epiphany season. Pastor Michelle, I noticed that you also have a bowl of water behind you. What's that for? Oh yeah, today is special because we remember Jesus' baptism. That's what the water represents. All right. So in remembering Jesus' baptism, we also today remember our own baptisms. We can remember that God declares to each and every one of us, you are my beloved child. In you, I am pleased. Right. That message of God loves you to each and every one of us. And God celebrates any time any one of us realizes and accepts that. When we have that realization that God loves us individually, so now you all at home can get a bowl of water so that you can remember your baptism with us. Suppose somebody's not baptized yet, what do they do? Well, God loves you no matter what. And God promises that you belong to God. 
So the water can still be a reminder that God loves you, even if you're not baptized. And then later when it's a little warmer outside and it's safer, we can plan a baptism for you. Baptism in worship is a reminder, not only for you, but for the whole community. And that reminder is that God loves you now. Wow. So today is a special day. Let's enter into worship and remember to celebrate that God loves the whole world, not just some of us, but every one of us. Thanks for the reminder. In this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, we are seeking light. In our own lives, our neighborhoods, our families, we are seeking light. In our work, our country, our world, we are seeking light. Jesus promises that when we seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be opened, ask and it will be given to you. Today is a special day. We pause during worship and take time to remember our baptisms. To mark our bodies with water. To remember that God loves you me, and every one of us. Dorothy, I think you have a, a bowl of water too, don't you? We bless you, Holy Trinity, one God, source of life that gave us birth, fountain of living water,
our light and our salvation. We are connected to Christ in the waters of baptism, clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. We give thanks to, for the gift of baptism We give you thanks, God. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters. By your word, you created the world. You called forth life. In which you took delight. Through water, you are revealed. In the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. You made a way through the Red Sea. And you led your people from slavery into freedom. At the river, John baptized Jesus, and you anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, You proclaim we are your daughters and sons. We receive your promise and become servants of all. So now for those of you at home, if you've gotten your bowls of water out, I want you to do what I'm about to do. Get your bowl of water. And then just dip your fingers into it. And we will do this together as I do it here on screen, I want you to also do it, where you make a, a, the sign of the cross on your forehead using water, just like this. You are my beloved child. In you, I am pleased. And just so you remember it, we'll say it again. You are my beloved child. In you, I am pleased.
We praise you, God. Praise for water. It sustains life. Praise for new life in Jesus Christ. Honor and praise to you. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Dorothy. So in the beginning of today's gospel lesson, you might feel a little confused by all the names. There will be a list of important names. These are people connected to places and positions, religious leaders, community leaders, people in government. You will see a lot of names and a lot of places. Now, as you encounter all of these names, you will notice that this is in contrast to a single guy wandering in the wilderness. This guy is just wandering around and he's calling out to people to repent and be baptized. So the gospel writer sets up this contrast between what people do and what God was doing. You know, the most important people think that they're in control and know exactly what's going on, right? They think that they uh, have a handle on everything. But we know that God is going to surprise them. And not just them, but us. And not just once, but repeatedly. So as you watch the Bible lesson today, don't worry about memorizing this list of names, the places, the people, they're not that important. Just notice how many of them there are. And then by contrast, notice how the gospel writer sets that it up against one person. And also, the important thing about this story is that it's when Jesus was baptized. And while that is the most important piece of the story, it's very brief. And it's a surprise. And it's And so now Deacon Dorothy is going to share with us today's gospel lesson. Today's gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. For 15 years... Emperor Tiberius had ruled this part of the world. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee. Herod's brother Philip was the ruler in the countries of Ituria. Trachonitis, and Lysanias was the ruler of Albany. Ananias and Caiaphas were Jewish high priests. At that time, God spoke to Zechariah's son John who was living in the desert. 
So John went along the Jordan Valley, saying to the people, Turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. Isaiah the prophet wrote about John when he said, In the desert, someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a path straight for him. Fill up every valley and level every mountain and hill. Straighten the crooked paths and smooth out the rough roads. Then everyone will see the saving power of God. Crowds of people came out to be baptized. But John said to them, You bunch of snakes! Who warned you to run from the coming judgment? Do something to show that you have truly given up your sins. Don't start saying that you belong to Abraham's family. God can turn these stones into children for Abraham. An axe is ready to cut the trees down at their roots. Any tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into a fire. The crowds asked John, what should we do? John told them, if you have two coats, give one to someone who doesn't have any. If you have food, share it with someone else. When the tax collectors came to be baptized, they asked John, Teacher, what should we do? John replied, Don't make people pay any more than what they owe. Some soldiers asked him, And what about us? What do we have to do? John told them, Don't force people to pay money to make you leave them alone. Be satisfied with your pay. Everyone became excited and wondered, Could John be the Messiah? But John said, I am just baptizing you with water. But someone more powerful is going to come. And I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His threshing fork is in his hand, and he is ready to separate the wheat from the husks. He will store the wheat in his barn and burn the husks with a fire that never ends.
In many different ways, John preached the good news to the people. But to Herod the ruler, he said, It was wrong for you to take Herodias, your brother's wife. John also said that Herod had done many other bad things. Finally, Herod put John in jail, and this was the worst thing he had done. While everyone else was being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. Then as he prayed, the sky opened up, And the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove. A voice from heaven said, You are my own beloved Son. In you I am pleased. My friends, I want you to know this truth. God will be revealed to the world. Always, God will be revealed. Amen. Yes, even in the midst of many, many upsetting and awful events, God will be revealed. We are recording worship here today on Thursday afternoon. It was just a little more than 24 hours ago when people broke into the Capitol building uh, when our senators and representatives were doing their work. People carried Nazi emblems and flags into our Capitol building. They went in with intent to harm. This disruption and violence in our United States Capitol scrapes away another layer of our sense of community and our country. We are already feeling isolated and lonely from the COVID pandemic. And here in Minnesota, I think we're feeling lonely because there's been more tight restrictions recently. <clears throat> and we are feeling, continue to feel unsure and despondent because of the ongoing effects of racism in our communities and in our towns, our cities, all over our country. And still, still God promises that even in the midst of so many upsetting and awful events that are happening, God will be revealed. This is the promise of Epiphany when the wise people follow the star the promise is that God is revealed and shared. God is understood. And yes, God is misunderstood. And still and always God promises 
that God's ways and God's ideas, God's vision for our world, the ways of mercy and compassion, grace and kindness, justice and love, all of that will be known in our world. So I want to let that promise settle for just a moment before we go on, because we have had a lot of disruption in our lives in the last year. So we just take a moment to sit with that promise. God promises to be known, that God will be revealed. And so a question I have for you is how do you know God? How do you know about God? Well, one way that we hear a bread of life can know about God is through partnerships with other people and other congregations. So in the last couple of years, we have started to get to know uh, Bethel Evangelical Lutheran Church. And so over the next five weeks, we start um, sharing the pulpit. We're gonna trade uh, worship leaders between Bread of Life and Bethel. And so this sermon today will be shared with Bethel and it will be used there too. And then next week here at Bread of Life, Pastor Brenda will be with us. And then her sermon will be shared at Bethel later. And then we'll continue that pattern until early February with Deacon Dorothy intern Lori, and Dr. Jen, who works at Bethel. We are doing our best to build up our relationships and our partnerships with Bethel. And Bethel is doing the same, building relationships and partnership with Bread of Life. So one way that we can see God, the one, one way that God is revealed is in our work together. Now, that does not mean that everything we try will go perfectly or that it'll be easy. It means that we get glimpses of one another's lives. We get to learn together about the challenges that we encounter and we can figure out ways that we can help one another. And we'll be persistent, right? We will keep working together, trying our best, even though there will be culture differences and there definitely are language differences between our two congregations. But in our trying, in our working together, in our mistakes, and in our successes, God will be revealed. We will get to know God more. And that is the message of Epiphany, that God is revealed. 
And on Epiphany, we remember and rejoice that the wise ones found Jesus by a star. And with that promise, we are awed that God includes everyone in the hope and the promise that God loves us and God wants to know us. So one way we can know more about God is in our work together, this partnership we have with Bethel. And I think then for me, that raises the next question, right? We get to know about God. Then how do others know about God from you? Again, it's promised that God will be revealed. We get to know who God is. And in today's gospel lesson, John the Baptist stands out in the wilderness in contrast to the political and religious leaders. John is in the wilderness calling any and all to come. Come to the river to repent and be forgiven. As John preaches, his goal really is to disrupt our sense that we deserve to be in God's good graces. John proclaims that our heritage that our ties to the past revelations of God, that doesn't save us. God declared, oh, excuse me, John declares the truth of God, that God is good and kind. That will be shown to the world if needed. God's goodness and kindness will be shown how? Through rocks and flowers. God does not need beautiful temples or amazing sanctuaries. God does not need us to have perfect speeches or very articulate descriptions of God. Instead, God calls us to trust that God will meet our needs through one another and in our relationships. That's how we will know God. And today's gospel lesson has some very practical, doable ways we can show God do you have an extra coat? Share it with someone who needs a coat. Do you have the opportunity to take more than you need? Don't, don't take more than you need. Are you stronger than your neighbors? Or do you have a job where you have a lot of power over other people? Don't take advantage of your strength or your power. Instead, use your strength, use your power to help others. Because when you do these things, you show God to the world.
Now in my mind, I'm hearing people say to me or assign to me, Pastor Michelle, wait a second. Isn't this Sunday supposed to be when we remember baptism? Like you're talking about all these other things. What about baptism? I know it is. This is supposed to be about baptism. When we remember that Jesus is baptized, when we remember our own baptism, or when we, as we look forward to when we will be baptized, it's supposed to be about that. So I really wrestled to try to figure out how do I do this? So I'm going to cram it in there. Just going to cram it in there. Because really that's where baptism ends up in the gospel lesson today. John is preaching the good news. This promise that no matter what happens, God will be revealed. And then this other promise that we get to be a part of it. We get to share God with others. These promises, they are sealed in those waters of baptism. Those promises are sealed into us when the Holy Spirit comes upon us with these words. You are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. These promises envelop us. And as we trust those promises, we are no longer strangers with God. But instead, through trust and faith, we are included in life with God. And because our God is concerned about our neighbors, then we are included in life with one another. Our lives become not about ourselves, but about our community. So together with God and with one another, we experience joy and heartbreak. Together, we take time to celebrate and to share our loss and our disappointments. Together, we look for God being revealed and we share that with one another, especially when so many upsetting and awful things are happening. We seek to notice how we know God. Because this week, every time you wash your hands or take a drink, or maybe you'll notice the snow falling, or if you live in warmer area, the rain falling, remember these words. You are my child, my beloved, with you. I am well pleased. And as frustrating as our neighbors can be, this promise is for our neighbors too. 
because even in the midst or especially in the midst of so many upsetting and awful things happening, when we trust this promise, when our neighbors trust this promise, that is how we know God in our world. Amen. Prayers for the people, which probably feels a little bit strange during a time of COVID. How can we share prayers with one another? You can type out a prayer. Under our YouTube video, you see the comments box. Or if you need to, you can send an email directly to me at the church. So go ahead and share the names and situations of the people that you're concerned with or concerned about, and also the praise reports that you have to share with us, because we want to share in your joy as well. Lord Jesus, light of the world, accept our prayers. Use us to reflect your light so that places of darkness in our world will be filled with your light. Then all the nations will be drawn to you and overwhelmed with joy. Amen. At the birth of Christ, the angel sang a song of peace and goodwill for all. So we say to you, the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Peace be with you, Deacon Dorothy, and also with you, Pastor Michelle. So for those of you at home, please pass the peace to one another, whether that's through a text message, an email, a handwritten card, or even a letter sent through snail mail. Please take some time to share the peace with one another. Similarly to how it's a little weird to share the peace, pass the peace during a time of COVID, it is also sort of odd to try and collect an offering, but God is still showing up and still doing work and doing so in surprising ways to all of us.
the message that God loves us comes from strangers and often from unexpected people. So God asks and trusts us to give witness to the good news that God loves us and that we share that good news with others, that God loves the deaf community and their families. So we invite you to join us in this calling. And you may be wondering how you can help. What ideas do you have for how we can connect with members of the deaf community? Will you help us financially to do this work? Unfortunately, it isn't free and we need your help. We continue to make our utility payments, even though we're not in the church. We continue to pay our staff, who can't work for free, obviously. And so we need your financial support. So please either send a check to Bold or use PayPal, which you'll find on the website. And you can donate however often you want, whether that's monthly or weekly or some other time frame. But we truly appreciate your prayers, your time, and your offering. Amen. A prayer for offering. Good teacher, in your life, you show us how to live, to live with compassion, peace, and generosity. Bless our gifts with your love, so we use them for your purpose in our world. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught. There will be no English interpretation for this. God gathers us together and God sends us from this place. As you go, receive this blessing. The God of glory lives in you. Names you, beloved, and shines brightly on your path. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.